even if you try to dunk on Chovy or like try to gank him or something else, he's not really the type of guy, like even if you get first blood on Chovy, he's probably still going to win in CS anyway. He's always going to be relevant regardless, so... <laughs> Hello everybody and welcome to another video here for WCG Close Up. This is going to be the world's special episode. It is with me, Valdez, and Wolf. How are you doing, Wolf, today? It's a fun day to talk about worlds. I'm really excited for worlds. We're getting very close, just a few days away for us, about a week or, or so. So uh, it feels like we've been waiting forever since we finished our world's qualifiers here in Korea. Uh, but it's it's common. Time's up. It's time to start Worlds. <laughs> Absolutely. Worlds is the best time of the year. It's always like uh, a whole month of uh, all the planning, the preparation of all the teams, all the casters, all the talent, everybody uh, just coming together. And there's always the some of the best um, content as well, I feel like, that comes around at this time. Because everybody's really trying hard to make good stuff for Worlds. So hopefully we can... Uh, supplement that a little bit with some of our thoughts about worlds as well so uh, us being LCK casters we're mostly going to talk about the uh, Korean teams and what we think about their chances uh, in terms of worlds overall and especially in their groups that we do have so far so um, starting off I feel like we should just get right into it we do have Humble Life in group A of the play-ins and this is, you know, it's really interesting how they even got here in the first place. I think everybody was looking at Nongshim Red Force, uh, Live Sandbox, even Afrika, you know, to potentially get this spot. But Hummel Life was the team that made it in. So uh, what are your thoughts, Wolf, about Hummel Life making it to Worlds, but also their chances in Group A? I, I think it's it's really cool to see Hummel Life make it through. Um, it would have been really fun to see Nongshim as well. I think Nongshim in this group might have a harder time just stylistically because uh, Nongshim as a team doesn't have that Chovy factor, right? Which mm -hmm. I think is a really exciting part of why people wanted to watch Hanalife Life Esports at Worlds. It's something that we've been talking about as LCK casters for a really long time. Um, and going to this group, I feel like there's a very aggressive set of teams in here. Infinity Esports, very known for being aggressive, right? Red Cannons uh, as well. I, I think that when you consider that Hunter Life Esports plays a fairly scrappy style, mm -hmm. um, especially when they're playing around their top and jungle. I think that it's pretty good stylistically for them against Infinity Esports, against Red Cannons, and against Peace. They have Vivisachi coming in. It's a little bit hard to know how strong they're going to be, just mm -hmm. in general. Um, they, the real scary team to worry about for Hunter Life Esports is going to be LNG. And I personally think that given that they have Tarzan and Hunter Life Esports has Willer, um, <laughs> that's what I'm mostly worried about because yeah, I think Chovy can beat Icon in in the one v one and can win the lane for sure mm -hmm. if he's playing well. But Icon is is no slouch, and because he has Tarzan to back him up, as long as LNG doesn't fall into the trap of trying to heavily commit too much to the mid lane mm -hmm. and they put their resources into the top lane, I really think LNG wins that matchup. I believe it's the first matchup of Worlds, so it's a really exciting yep. one. Um, but LNG overall seems to be the stronger team to me. But I, I also don't think there's any world in where Hunter Life Esports messes this up and doesn't get out of the group. Like, I think it's it seems pretty clear to me, like, LNG number one, Hunter Life Esports number two, and we're not going to get too many big upsets. Yeah, I would tend to agree. I think that uh, that mismatch up on the top side of the map with Tarzan is going to be rough. And as you mentioned, like, playing around Chovy, even if you try to dunk on Chovy or, like, try to gank him or something else, he's not really... The type of guy, like, even if you get first blood on Chovy, he's probably still going to win in CS anyway. He's always going to be relevant regardless. So I feel like, you know, we were even talking about some stats um, a couple days ago. And Morgan, you know, he's he's definitely one of the weak points, not just for Humble Life, but for all of Worlds. Like, it, it, he doesn't really stack up to a lot of the other players. And I think that, you know, even though LNG, they're not super known for a stacked top laner but they do have tarzan who's there and can kind of just camp top you know go for dives go for that i think they're gonna have a lot of luck there but uh there's definitely still the deft in the fine print and vista deft was part of the reason why homo life are here at all right like chovy was playing very well but like deft really stepped up to another level and i think that homo life uh, there is a world in which they can kind of just actually win games through their bottom lane. And Vista was a guy that we talked about a lot in, I feel like 
last year and also the beginning of this year, but he kind of fell off. And especially when Deft wasn't doing as well in spring, a lot of people kind of just stopped talking about the Hummel Life bottom lane. But um, they're really coming to the perfect timing, you know, right before Worlds. This is why Hummel Life even got here in the first place, because they are peaking at the exact right point. You know, I feel like teams, they're probably going to just ban away Camille. And Morgan yeah. won't really be able to play Camille, <laughs> right? I think a lot of the LCK teams may have overlooked that fact. But if you're doing your research, you just ban away Camille. Uh, again, we'll have to see what the meta is. But either way, I, I think that Hummel Life have a chance to work through their bottom lane. And I kind of do agree as well that, like, in the group, you know, Infinity, Peace, Red Canids, like, there are some decent teams there. But the two standout favorites by far should be LNG and Hummel Life. Yeah. Group B is a little bit different, where I feel like they have some mix and match there, like Beyond Gaming, that needs some focus, maybe could see some interesting stuff there, but like, Group A seems pretty set in stone, unless we get some big upsets. Yeah, I, I think the one way this group goes a little bit differently than people expect is if some of the aggression that, um, you know, Red Cannons and Infinity Esports kind of bring to the table kind of clashes with LNGs. And the kind of variance level of the gameplay goes up a lot because mm -hmm. if you fight over uh, Drake, you know, in the first you know ten minutes of the game and end up getting four kills as one of these weaker teams, you might actually be able to upset that best of one game in the group. And then maybe yeah. even though LNG beat Hanwha Life Esports, like Hanwha Life Esports beats everyone more cleanly, and then they end up getting first place in the group. But yeah, I, I don't see any world in which you know we see like peace sneak out of the group. Um, this is not a Pentanet GG happy ending story i think <laughs> yeah, unfortunately <laughs> this time um yeah. and these groups are way more competitive than what we saw in msi obviously msi you know kind of made the groups a little bit weaker because of the way it was seated mm -hmm. um but this is a you know very cut and dry group i think everybody generally agrees with that and i think for Hanalife life esports my one one thing I, I feel like they should do is probably play morgan around weak side top instead of actually trying to control top yeah. and just play slow like, Morgan's a great Orn player, for example. He doesn't necessarily have to play Orn, but just playing champions like that that go well in the late game, play slow, let Chovy get his CS advantage over whoever he's playing against. Like you said, even if he ends up getting first blood killed, he's probably going to be 50 CS up or more at the end of the game. So yeah. just let that happen. Play slower than Hanwha Life Esports often does. And that, I think that's it basically guarantees you're going to get out of the group. Yeah, I would I would uh, tend to agree. Another <laughs> another thing to think about is that the meta right now is kind of, you know, many every, every year when we go into worlds, there's always a world's meta because the tournament's so long, it's a it's a totally new patch, you know, everybody qualified through patch 11:16 or 11:17, but now we're on I think it's 11:19 for worlds. So it's like so all these players have been playing solo queue, have been playing scrims, and we are going to see new picks. We are going to see a new meta, most likely. Um, we don't really have anything that's like the Arden Sensor meta nowadays, you know, like, ooh, scary, everybody has to play it. You know, there is kind of like still Gore Drinker Starks exists, and we're probably going to see Bruisers. Like, I don't think that's going to change too much. But like, picks in the mid lane, like, who knows? Chovy will play literally anything. Um, we've seen him play Lilia in the mid lane. And Will he be the first one to pull out the Trindamir mid against LNG in game one? I could see it. Absolutely. I could definitely see it. No, I could definitely see that. <laughs> Absolutely. He's one of the players to do that. Um, Willer, on the other hand, I don't think will be playing any of that uh, new talent no. Zed jungle stuff that is happening. He's probably just going to stick to, uh, yeah, I'll just play Trundle, I'll be Chovy's bodyguard, and that's how it's going to be. <laughs> yeah, I think that's fine. I think that uh, all the junglers can just play Trundle every game, right? Like uh, Fnatic, which we will get to a little bit later. Yeah, I, I suppose that's kind of our thoughts about Hummel Life. I think overall it's pretty good. Like, I, I think they're a team that, especially because of Chovy, I don't think they're going to get caught off guard by, like, any weird meta stuff. Like, uh, <laughs> you know, we we do care about this Fiesta here in play-ins, actually, at least in this, in this <laughs> yeah, video. Um, <laughs> and it is going to be very Fiesta-y. I think that... Uh, some of those Latin America teams can actually do really well. You know, they have potential, but still on paper, it's hard to really... It's hard to say that Homo Life is going to get caught off guard by this. Yeah, I think either first or second out of the group should be pretty safe for them.